Hello, and welcome to Daily Bread, Thoughts for Your Devotions. Today is Wednesday, April 29th, and I'm very happy that you guys are tuning in. If you're anything like me, you're looking forward to some of these restrictions being lifted here in Texas that happens at 11.59 p.m. tomorrow, Thursday, April 30th. And whether you think that this is premature or that it's about time, um, there does seem to be a general feeling here uh, that it is about time, and we're cautiously optimistic that uh, going back to 25% of capacity inside buildings uh, will, will not lead to more infections or death, but hopefully to, um, to a return to some normal rhythms, especially for those people who are uh, struggling to get by, those people who are struggling um, fighting uh, addictions or loneliness or other things like that in their homes. So uh, we lift them up in prayer, um, and I hope that you do too. Today we're going to be piggybacking off from uh, yesterday, the day before, when we're talking about what does God have planned for his people through all of this coronavirus stuff. And while I have to admit, because I think that I've been like uh, Horace Greeley, I've been bearing the, the lead, um, I, I, I gotta say, that what God has planned for us as a church is probably a, an impossible question to answer because I think it's going to look different depending on the, the gifting and the skills of the individual congregations and the individuals within certain congregations as to what's next or what are we supposed to make of this, what have we learned, that sort of thing. So I was on a conference call yesterday um, with some some wonderful pastors here in the area and a couple over in Houston um, as we try to plan out this church partnership, church plant partnership that we're doing. Um, and I asked the question, what are you guys doing to, to get back in the game? And uh, what are you going to keep? How, how does your game strengthen through all of this? And so there were, there were a lot of different answers, and I'm proud to, to call these guys brothers because it seems like we've learned a lot. As Christians, what have we learned? Well, as I alluded to, and as I just point blank said the past couple days, appreciation is probably where my heart is at. Appreciating people who I normally don't think too much about, I'm sad to say, uh, people who provide essential functions that um, you know I miss in my day-to-day -day life. We all think of the, the heroes, um, police officers, firefighters, uh, doctors and nurses, they get a lot of attention, but um, let's not forget about the grocery store workers and the, the people who are manufacturing personal protective equipment, those sort of people. Um, we are we're deeply thankful and appreciative, especially um, as we look towards people who are only making money off of tips usually, um, you know, uh, servers and people who are out of jobs like that. I said, you know, it's probably a good thing for us to be appreciative when they are able to start working again, when we're able to be back in there. And, and so I was looking through, through the book of Acts today and in some of Paul's uh, epistles, and it wasn't always that Christians were met with hostility. Um, I'm making this transition between appreciation and how the Christians were, um, were were known in the ancient world, and I have been listening to some podcasts about the um, the late, early, late, um, early to late Roman Empire, um, and they talk a little bit about Christians because in the 300s, when Constantine the Great comes to power, you know, he famously um, makes Christianity the uh, uh, official state religion for the Roman Empire, and it, but it doesn't, it doesn't quite happen quickly, right? Uh, it happens about 300 years after the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. So what happened in that time that, uh, that Christians just um, were, were able to develop such a following, um, the Holy Spirit was on the move? I think that it has to do with the reputation that Christians enjoyed. Christians were enjoying a reputation of, of kindness and boldness and freedom and humility. All of those things coupled together, kindness, boldness, freedom, and humility, uh, these things are not usually found um, in most human beings who don't know Jesus, who haven't experienced Jesus. Sometimes we're bold, yes, and sometimes we're, we're meek and mild and humble, especially if we've been humbled. But see, as Christians in the, in the early Roman Empire, uh, 
it was it was very appealing for for people who were on the margins of society to relate to Christianity because Jesus became poor. God became poor for us. And so so Jesus really elevated the poor. God has a heart for poor people, okay? And so this whole um, uh, demographic really like, latched on to Jesus. But there were also people in the upper classes too who were able to be financially generous, uh, who were uh, moved by the Holy Spirit to follow Jesus too. And so the, the Christians had this, this unbelievably powerful ability to mobilize people to help people, to use all the resources that they had, not just money, but also manpower to, to take care of people who would normally not be taken care of. And so, and so all of the things that we see for many, many centuries after Jesus' death and resurrection, even to the present day, many of these things that we take for granted and, and are even state-run now are, are products of Christians caring for one another, right? Hospitals, orphanages, schools, um, and not just these things for, for wealthy upper-class men, but for uh, all members of society. There's a, a famous um, passage in, um, I think it's uh, Suetonius, I don't know. He mostly deals with the Roman Empire emperor. Um, I forget which historian it is. He talks about the Christians who during a plague in the second century, um, they... They were going and picking people up off of the streets who had been thrown out by their own family members, and they bring them play, you know, to, to take care of them. They bring them into their own homes, and so this idea grew into what we now know as hospitals. Um, guys, there is so much good that Christians have done in the past and continue to do now, and this good is something that we should not give up on doing, but keep doing. We don't just do these things. Uh, so that we can please God, although we are happy when we do uh, please God with our works. We do this because we know God is pleased with us. In Jesus Christ, through our faith in Him, the Holy Spirit is given to us. God is pleased with us. That's what allows us to be bold and kind and humble and free. Will you pray with me? Lord Jesus, we thank you that you have freed us from all the things that would terrify us that you have freed us so that we don't have to boast anymore, but we boast in you. Thank you for freeing us so that we can be kind and that we can live for freedom and show your love in this world. We pray for all of those who are still suffering from this coronavirus. We pray that you would protect all those who will be going back to work shortly. And Lord, we pray that you would put a deep appreciation and joy into our hearts through all of this. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thanks for tuning in, guys. I will see you tomorrow.